Hello there, welcome Genesis Models and welcome to the basic weathering series using AK Interactive products. Now this is episode 6 and episode 6 we're going to be taking a look at doing um, mud, um, i.e. sort of like thick textured mud to really sort of take our whip it here and you know bring it into that sort of theatre of World War One trench warfare. But first off we're going to make up a bit of a mixture first. Um, so a couple of ingredients that you're going to need here is we have some plaster base by AK Interactive. This is what's going to thicken up and give us that textured look of mud. Uh, and then we have, uh, I'm going to be using European earth for this which is a pigment by AK Interactive and this is to give our base colour. I mean there's going to be loads more sort of colours we're going to be putting into this but as just to get that base and um, texture to, to our mud effect first then you need some water and what we're going to do we're going to mix something up here so I'm just taking uh, these are shot glasses you can get these from any sort of cheap shop um, they're just made out of plastic or, or something where we can um, just add our mixture to right then so let's open this up uh, let's get out a spatula adjust find my spatula just here and what we're going to do we're going to start to sort of add in a couple of scoops of our mixture here right better to make more than um, not enough then we're going to take our colour add in about a 50-50 sort of you know pigments to plaster However, um, this really, I mean, it doesn't have to be an exact mixture, just um, you sort of want to get it to that right consistency, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, a few little extras you could add if you wish. Me personally, I like to just get out some flock. Um, this is from Games Workshop, but you know, any flock will do. And I just like to whack a pinch of that in there as well because um, that that will change colour to our mud colour but it adds that little bit of extra of like clumped up bits of um, grass that have like got caught in the tracks as well um, nice little effect there and then you want to add some water which I'm going to add with a pipette and when doing this with the water you want to sort of add the water in stages okay and you want to sort of mix it up See, that was a bit too much water because as you can see that there is is a little bit too sloppy right we want it to be a bit more thicker than that so if that ever happens let's just quickly clean our spatula here right just get some more plaster and pigments and whack that in there right and then again we give it another sort of mix and we want to basically you'll know when it's done because it will start to actually look like um, thick mud not like sloppy mud or anything like that it's going to start to look like mud which it's not quite there it's still got too much of a, um, a smoothness to it all right let's whack some more plaster and again, right, a bit more of that. And here we go. This is starting to sort of get there. It might need a little bit of water, but it's starting to look quite sort of muddy now. Hopefully, you can sort of just see that now. It feels quite thick, not too wet. Yeah, just like that. I do want to add a little bit of something else. I have noticed that um, it does dry a little bit too quickly for my 
liking. So um, what I've also got here is fluid retarder. Now fluid retarder, you can get you can get fluid retarder from any kind of shop. This this is Windsor and Newton, but um, really you can go into any art store and buy um, a bit of fluid retarder. Okay, let's just pour that water away in the pipette. Right, and I just want to get literally. We we don't want a lot of this. I mean, we just want to, you know, maybe a drop or two or three. Right, just a bit. Right. Whole reason for this is I do find that um, this does dry up rather rather quickly, and you don't want it to dry too quickly because you want to be able to have some sort of time, playing time, to actually apply this. Right. There we go, that's looking good now. And that retarder should give us that bit more playing time. So let's put this away. And we've got to sort of work quick, because as I say, it does dry fairly quickly. Um, it is quite a messy process, messing with pigment. So let's get down kitchen paper towel. Let's bring in our tracks here, All right? And this is sort of like the fun part now. If we get out, um, a really sort of just old, maybe dry brush or some sort of you know biggish paintbrush that's just old and as you can see it's all sort of manky. You don't really want to worry about it. And what we're going to do, we're just going to sort of dip in, dab into our little mixture here, and then the cool thing is, is we just then sort of want to dab this on to our tracks, all right? Right, we don't want to brush it on because if we brush it on, it's going to you know, look a little bit not so natural. Just nice and simply dabbing this on and immediately we get our mud texture. Right. Hopefully as you can see just there, I mean that's got a lovely, lovely texture to it of, of mud. Right, there is more stages to this to make it look more sort of muddy, but this is all about getting that base bit of texture on first. Right, and we want to go all the way along our tracks with this. Right, and then when it comes to the opposite side, um, we want to get this sort of just on the edges. Right, um, for this particular set of tracks, I mean, it depends what armoured vehicle you do, depends how you do this, but with, with this particular one, um, because the tracks, they do get, um, let's just get this out for you. Um, with these particular tracks, hopefully you can see, if we lay this down, um, you know, that's all you're gonna see. You're only gonna see that tip of it. And if you sort of, whack it all on the, the un, uh, all this running gear here in the middle, it's just gonna interfere with it actually going onto the model um, and it's gonna not fit so right. So you just wanna tap, dab down, just on the sides here, just to sort of give them a little bit of a texture to it as well. Um, nothing too major with that. Also, we, while we've got it out, what you also want to do is um, you want to add a little bit to the model itself, right? So again, we're just going to dab a bit of this onto our brush, and then we're going to just on you know the tips, you know just at the bottom here, right? We can dab on these bits of thick mud and texture, right? Just onto the model itself. Again, you know, this is just the the first part, the part where we actually just add the texture. All right, we can add all sorts of extra colors to this at a, after we've done this, but for now, let's just get that texture down. So that's um, now got all that um, nice texture down on there, as I say, it's a base. So what I want to do now, I want to sort of um, represent sort of moisture, so to speak. So what I'm going to be using for this is dust and dirt, um, uh, sorry, dust and dirt deposits by AK Interactive. It's a nice um, sort of enamel mixture we've got here. Give it a good shake as usual. And again, you know, using a shot glass or whatever you might have, we're just going to pour a bit of this 
in here. We don't need that much. Right, so we've got a nice mixture in there. Um, but we want to sort of just thicken it up. We don't want it to be like that textury um, for this bit. So a little bit of our plaster again. All right, we can just you know, start off with a bit. Right, and feel like we need some more, just keep adding some more, mix it, you know, just like before. And we just want to, um, you know, we don't, we want it to just be a little bit thicker, right? But we don't want it to be mega thick, really. All right, sort of, you know, a bit like that. It really isn't that much thicker really because what we're trying to do here is I, I want to um, well it's probably best if I just show you what we're going to do is we're actually going to target the middle of our tracks here so we're just going to now just dab this down right but we're just going to dab it down in the middle right and what this is basically going to do is it's going to sort of um, represent that our tracks are you know they're all thick and muddy and you know in the middle where all that mud sort of accumulated you know it's more sort of wet and then at the edges um, it's starting to dry so you've got those two different colors to sort of distinguish between you know it being a little bit more sort of wetter and thicker sort of thing in the middle of the tracks Right, and we can just dab this on. We don't have to worry again too much about it not looking quite so muddy yet. Again, this is another layer um, in the whole sort of grand scheme of things, so to speak, to, to layer this up into a nice bit of mud. So we'll whack that on. Um, again, you know, bring back your model here. And as you can see, you know, that's looking very, very light, but, you know, we whack this on again, um, just dab this on, but say at the bottom, right, this time, let's not go all the way up, let's just sort of go halfway up of what we've already got, just like this. So again, we're representing um, the fact that the mud is more wet at the bottom because gravity brings you know moisture down and it's sort of drying a little bit more going up the hull right and that's what we're trying to sort of represent both on the model and on the tracks themselves again this is just the base right so you know something something like that you know looking looking pretty good so far um, and i'll go all around the rest of the tracks and the model doing that right then so there's our nice base for um, our tracks here as you can see loads of texture on them we're representing you know it being a bit moister and wetter in the middle so this is where we're sort of going to add the color to this um, we're going to be coming along i'm going to be using um, ak's european earth um, which is AK042. We're going to have some dark earth as well, AK081, and some light dust, AK040. So we want to just sort of basically get these all open, out, and ready. Um, and this is sort of like the fun, messy part. It is as easy as, you know, let's just whack on these pigments. Right, but literally, you know, we're going to be sort of going into each pot of these different colors and just start whacking it on. You know, let's go down on it, let's get it on thick, right? Because hopefully, as you can see, after we've sort of put that work in, putting our base down and everything, I mean, just putting them pigments on now is really sort of um, livening this all up, right? But just remember to keep it random and natural, slapping down these pigments, right? Nice and easily, as easily as just literally, again, just slap down these pigments, keeping all of them as random as possible. And look, as you can see, that already is looking like a really cool, muddy effect. Um, the same goes for, if we bring the whip it back in here, Right, the same goes for, you know, working up the sides here. Let's just get out the pigments. Let's maybe move this back a bit so I can get you on camera a bit better. 
All right, just getting out the pigments and just whacking it on. Just don't mess about. All right, let's not try and go too far up. But yeah, let's just whack on these pigments. Again, make sure you've got a kitchen paper towel down because all this falling pigments is going to be absolutely messy and you'll be cleaning it up for absolutely days. So kitchen paper towel to catch it all. Right, and just remember just to just whack it all on. Right, and if you're not, say, too happy maybe in a certain area, like, say, about here, I'm not too happy with how much pigments is going on here. I mean, you can sort of just lightly brush off your brush and then just start sort of almost sort of flicking it off, sort of, well, maybe get another brush out, a bit more of a a cleaner one so we've got a little dry brush here which is a bit more cleaner and we can sort of work it off if we're not too happy with it right. just like so and then we can come back in with the pigment say at the bottom because I didn't want it to go too far up right. And there we go, starting to, to look cool there. Let's brush this off a little bit more. Might take a little bit of time to brush it, but we can sort of clean that up a little bit better and work our way around. And I have basically sort of finished this side. So hopefully you can see, you know, that's the, the effect you're getting. Um, and then there is one little last stage to this, which I'll show you in a second after getting this all done. Right, so we've got this big mess going on here, but um, hopefully, you know, you're seeing, you know, a massive sort of difference. We're just putting those pigments down, looking very, very muddy. So let's just um, turn this over. Let's give it a bit of a tap. Let's get off the sort of bigger loose pigments that are probably left over. All right, and then we want to put this carefully in the bin, all right, because that's a lot of loose pigments that will just make your life very messy for the next couple of days. Get out a clean kitchen paper towel. Then we're gonna get out our airbrush here. Um, we wanna set our airbrush to as low as we can sort of get it really. I mean, uh, 10 PSI if we can. Because the, the, the thing is we need to, we're gonna spray on some pigment fixer now, which is AK048 and um, if we have the air pressure up too high, we're just going to blow off a lot of um, these pigments. So keeping it as low as possible, even if the airbrush is starting to splutter a little bit. Um, and this stuff is actually you know, quite thin anyway. And we can just pour this in neat into the colour cup. Right. And as I say, you know, air pressure as low as you can get it. And then what we're going to do is just nice and easily, we can just spray this on. All right, let's start off with a quick spray over with one coat just to start to get those pigments to start locking down, right, without blowing them all off. All right, and again on the opposite side. All right, so let's let that sort of dry a bit as I say you don't want to be blowing off the pigments too much and the same goes for the model itself that we've got going on here we just want to quickly sort of spray on that bit of pigment fixer right and then let's let that um, have a little bit of time to dry just to get those pigments to sort of start sticking and then you could come in with maybe you know maybe two coats of it just to sort of lock them in because this is this this is very loose pigments and it's going to get quite messy um, and then really I mean that is it for doing thick mud now there is so many other ways of doing thick mud with all sorts of other techniques um, you know this is one way of doing it there are others so um, you know hopefully that sort of helps you sort of get that nice muddy effect um, for you there um, so that's the end of episode six uh, next episode episode seven we're going to be looking at sort of mud splatter so we're going to enhance this mud effect that we've already got on here 
um, even more with sort of mud splatters and everything um, you may have noticed I haven't worked on the the Land Rover that's just there because that's another different theater of war that's going into sort of desert dusty um, theaters and really they are sort of two sort of different sort of um, things going on so I'm just sort of showing you the mud and then after the mud's done we'll jump in and do some deserty dusty stuff so uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, episode six of doing some thick mud